Okay, so Craig Pierce is going to talk about uh, some uh, Ubuntu, uh, Edubuntu stuff. That's right. So, can everyone hear me? Yes, kind of. How's that? Excellent. Um, I'll make this as interactive as I can as well, so feel free to ask questions uh, within the next 20 minutes. So what this uh, presentation is on is uh, parental controls with Linux, Edge Ubuntu in particular. Um, there's a few sysadmin aspects. I think there's a few interesting um, pieces to the talk in terms of some of the programs that can be used. Just out of interest, who here has children? Yep, a good number of people, that's good. Um, I've got a couple of uh, young children. I'm trying to get ahead of the um, curve, I guess, in terms of making sure I can uh, have a fairly uh, fairly good setup at home in terms of the children being able to jump onto the machines and not get to the uh, the shock sites and whatever else. So um, it's a bit, a bit of a hobby, really, uh, just one of the many facets that um, I get up to in, in the hobby time in terms of seeing what, what's out there, uh, exploring a few Linux programs and seeing what uh, can be done with them. So what I'll be covering is um, some uh, very light touching of uh, what Edge Ubuntu is. Uh, then I'll um, look at some uh, safer web browsing techniques using the likes of uh, Web Content Control, which is a GUI for Dan's Guardian, Tiny, Proxy, uh, and uh, Firehole, which is an IP tables front end. I'll be looking at uh, uh, GNOME and what can be locked down there very briefly, uh, the likes of using uh, Pessulus and the GNOME web browser and then looking at uh, time-based quotas, so uh, things like um, Timekeeper and Timeout Daemon, which is a uh, PAM time uh, front end so that uh, session times can be uh, monitored and enforced. Uh, then I'll uh, wrap up by looking at some remote viewing and remote uh, control type software using the likes of XVNC and iTalk. So any questions? But yeah, feel free to ask questions at any time. Um, so the talk is a technical talk. It's not about um, parenting. Um, I'm, I've got a lot to learn there myself. And uh, it's not an exhausting, exhaustive talk. There'll be more tools and techniques out there, so I'd be happy to hear of any of them if uh, you know of those. And uh, I'm not fo uh, focusing on uh, lockdown either. So uh, if we've got time, I can look at a few of the GNOME lockdowns that can be applied. I've got some uh, puppet scripts that were donated by somebody else, but um, that's certainly not the, the focus of the talk. Okay, so I chose Edge Ubuntu uh, because it's um, a great uh, Ubuntu-based distribution jam-packed with a lot of educational tools, things like G Compre, uh, um, Child, uh, there's uh, G Compre, there's uh, programs like um, Xturtle, um, the, which is a logo-based um, environment, um, marbles and scientific stuff such as uh, Calcium, uh, geographical applications, uh, Child's Play, which is uh, really good. Um, out of it, um, just out of interest, who has seen or used those any of those applications before? Uh, great stuff, yeah. And uh, another part of uh, Ubuntu and Edge Ubuntu, or Linux in general, is uh, LTSP, which um, Edge Ubuntu is uh, basically uh, built into its distribution. LTSP is the Linux Terminal Server Project. So you can have a uh, server which offers the likes of um, uh, Pixie Booting, TFTP, uh, DHCP service to allow uh, diskless clients to then boot up, gather an IP address, bring down the kernel and init RD uh, images to then uh, boot up from a server. And that's great for enforcing um, controls because there's only one place where it needs to be enforced as opposed to having to enforce it on each of the desktops. So Edge Ubuntu uh, was its own self-contained Ubuntu-based distribution up until 9.04. Uh, at 9.04, Edge Ubuntu was an um, add-on, so a repository add-on into the, a standard Ubuntu build, of which you would then install it and uh, get all of the educational-based utilities that didn't come with Ubuntu. And uh, 910, which is the current release, Karmic, of Ubuntu, uh, Edge Ubuntu has gone to be its own um, uh, self-contained installation again. Now, throughout the demo, each of the utilities I'll be talking about, I'll uh, have a quick demonstration of um, as many of those as I can fit in. Uh, so I've got a bit of a, um, uh, a couple of VMs on the laptop here. So I've got an Edge Ubuntu server installation, which um, supplies the LTSB configuration, and that's running under VirtualBox. Then I've got a couple of clients. I've got a Quemu-based client and a 
another uh, VirtualBox based Edge Ubuntu client. Uh, there's a couple of instructions here if you're interested in looking at Edge Ubuntu and LTSP in particular, uh, the packages which are required, how to build up a um, change root image, and uh, then basically how to make uh, DHCP and Pixie uh, configured so that um, the uh, image can be brought down to diskless clients. So I'll just flip back here. What I've got is uh, I've already started the uh, Edge Ubuntu server, which I'll log into the server with my account. And I've got an Edge Ubuntu client uh, loading up via Quemu. Uh, I had to change uh, laptops recently, so um, I foolishly bought a laptop which uh, didn't have the uh, VM extensions for the CPU, so Quemu runs very slowly. So I probably I won't persevere with Quemu as a client uh, in the presentation. But one thing uh, why I did start Quemu uh, to show is uh, being able to run uh, different hypervisors, but still being able to have them networked together uh, using the likes of Linux bridging, which is what I've configured here. I actually think there's a talk about that um, either it might be um, Wednesday or Thursday. So I won't go into too much depth um, and. What I will do is stop the Queenie client because it's hogging, hogging resources. But what I will do is uh, start the VirtualBox client. So we've got a diskless client here for Edge Ubuntu. As you can see, there's no hard drives. We'll um, power that up. And what that should do is um, uh, call out to um, look for a DHCP server, which it gets. And then it'll bring down a um, Linux kernel and init RD image from the Edge Ubuntu server. So we'll let that load up in the background. So the bridging I've used to make it a little bit more hypervisor independent is uh, a simple Linux uh, Linux bridge device. It shows a unique uh, non-routed network. And um, for Quemu, I uh, wrote a Quemu if up script so that uh, the um, uh, bridge device gets gets attached uh, to a Quemu time tap device. Any questions so far? Okay, so the first uh, parental control uh, I'll look at is uh, some Mozilla Firefox plugins, uh, of which one of those is the Procon Latte. So. Procon Latte, it's a free Firefox uh, plugin uh, that allows for uh, whitelisting of sites. Um, as we all probably know, whitelisting is a better approach where possible uh, for lockdown because it um, allows only known good as opposed to blacklisting, which is uh, preventing known bad. So if we uh, flip back to uh, the Edge of Winter server. Just open up Firefox. Any questions while some programs are loading? Have these um, the web interfaces in there? Have they been there for some time? Because I the last time I used it was a little while, uh, probably a version or two. They probably sorry, I missed the start of the question. How long have the web interfaces been? there and the controls like that for because last time I used it, which was a couple of versions ago admittedly, yeah. there was no nothing that you mean even remotely like that. I had to install Dance Guardian, set it up. Yeah, sure. Um, so web content control which we'll uh, touch on after we look at Procon Latte is fairly new. I uh, I think it's only about eighteen months old. Um, I'm not a developer yet. I'm in touch with the developers. I'm hoping to get some time to get my hands dirty with the code, but um, it is fairly new. Um, and the reason it did come about was exactly that, um, trying to um, get around having to manually hack on Dan's Guardian config files and things. Uh, it's only a, a tactical sort of solution as well until uh, Gchild Care comes about to be, sorry, Gchild Mind comes about to be a bit more integrated and uh, versatile. I had to do a bit of hunting. Um, it's just one of those sort of 30-minute um, exercises which turned out to be a bit more in terms of looking for parental control software. There's no sort of uh, fully integrated net nanny style software under Linux. So it is, at the moment, a whole bunch of different um, uh, tools and techniques to get a similar result. 
Okay, so on the server I'm logged in as myself and I can get to a uh, sample site, um, stickthings.com. Um, actually, I've blocked that under Dan's Guardian. So I chose a site which wasn't um, something Dan's Guardian would normally block because otherwise it would probably not be a, a G-rated uh, talk. And in case Dan's Guardian wasn't working, I wouldn't want to go to a, a naughty site of sorts. Uh, so I've uh, come up with a... Uh, I've used a friend site and basically put that into Dan's Guardian's block list um, so that if it does display, then um, no one will be offended. So that's going to be the uh, test candidate. Hopefully by now our diskless client... Yes, it's come up. So we can see our diskless client um, is an LTSP-based client. I'll log in with a, an account I've named Toddler. While that's logging in. So Procon Latte, which is the first tool. Okay, so the sorts of things we can do with uh, Procon Latte is lock down Firefox. Uh, so we can sort of uh, prevent um, users going to the About config and changing Firefox uh, preferences. Uh, right-click blocking, view source of pages. Um, I probably won't show it. Uh, I'll let you guys uh, see the profanity filter. But what that does is um, uh, it's got a whole bunch of swear words and other words which aren't deemed suitable for children. And um, it does a basic um, uh, regular expression match on, on web pages. And if it finds those sorts of words, it will um, hash them out, uh, which is uh, uh, quite, uh, quite cool. I like that. And it's also got the, the whitelist um, component where we can enable just certain sites that can be used. One, one issue with uh, Procon Latte is that um, it only works for Firefox. So it's, it's not a great... Um, so uh, a smart child might just load up Epiphany or um, Safari or another browser which might be installed on the system. OK, so... I looked at that at home and uh, my wife, I blocked Facebook uh, via Procon Latte simply by turning the, the whitelist on and not adding that. And my wife simply uh, loaded up an alternate browser. So I thought, well, that's not going to work on the kids. It doesn't work on my wife. Um, I then installed Dan's Guardian and uh, set a proxy for um, the Firefox and um, another browser which my wife used. And she found a, a third browser, so I thought, well, OK, um, setting, setting proxies in the browser, that's, that's a simple way to work around, as we all know. That's when I looked at uh, uh, Dan's Guardian with, um, set with a transparent proxy, so that proxy would only accept traffic going out to the internet coming from Dan's Guardian as a program. Um, that's good, but it's, it's hacking on config files, so it's not all that um, uh, easy for uh, more Linux novices, I guess. That's where... Uh, that's where Web Content Control comes in. And Web Content Control is a uh, GUI for Dan's Guardian, um, Tiny Proxy, and Firehole. Firehole being a uh, somewhat nicer front end to IP tables. OK, so that's the client. Let's jump on the server. Yeah. I found that, because um, I use transparent boxing also for the same reasons. Yeah. Um, have you not run into any issues with HTTPS breaking? Because it has to be specifically set in the proxy, otherwise it won't work. Yeah, that's a good point. Certainly you do have to do that with HTTPS. Yeah. I, I look after a very large proxy at work. The, the general preference seems to be explicit proxy configuration and disable direct. So configure the proxy and then make turning it off meaningless. So sorry, configure the proxy and then... Set up Firefox or whatever browser you want with the proxy. Yep. And then just go straight to GANS Guardian or Squid or whatever you want. And then have the firewall block direct access. Yes, that's right. So yeah. you don't need transparent proxying. Yep. And well, if, you do tran if you do do transparent proxying, it's just to catch the other little things. Yeah, that's right, and that, that works as well. 
Uh, so the comment from the gentleman here was that many things don't expo don't support explicit proxies. And that's where transparent proxy will cat be a sort of a default catch-all. So here's the uh, GUI for web content rec uh, web content control. Uh, it's written in Gambus, which is a fairly simple scripting language. I'm not sure if anyone has seen or heard of Gambus before. Uh, so that was used by the developers of web content control as a real quick and dirty tactical to get something up and running. So this is where we can um, sort of globally enable or disable certain um, content control software such as Firehole, Tiny Proxy, and Dan's Guardian. Uh, it also allows us to um, edit uh, files without having to know where they're located uh, by clicking a button and then it will uh, launch gedit or another text editor of, of choice. I've probably haven't got too much uh, time to uh, go into all of the um, different settings there. I've got five minutes left. Um, uh, what I do want to say about um, web content control is it is specifically only for Tiny Proxy, Firehole and uh, Dance Guardian, where, the, where there is other software out there such as SquidGuard, um, uh, UFW, which is Ubuntu Firewall, um, obviously Squid as opposed to uh, Tiny Proxy, and that's where the G Childcare product is more of a strategic uh, product which will have separate client and server components and be able to hook into uh, different software to make it more uh, adaptable. Uh, that's certainly in the, the sort of the blueprint phase at the moment. Um, I've got some configuration here on uh, what is generated for Firehole, Firehole rather. I've put in a uh, network um, rule to allow connections, simple connections for DHCP, Pixie and the like uh, to speed things up for the presentation. But what we can see here is um, uh, the important bits of first line where only Dan's Guardian is allowed access out. That gives us the catch-all um, transparent nature of the proxy. Time-based quotas uh, was the next thing I wanted to uh, talk about. So. Uh, there's, uh, I've given three approaches to um, restricting the amount of time that uh, the child can use on the machine. Leech Block is a Firefox plugin. Uh, it works well, but it's got the same downsides in that uh, you need to be running Firefox for it uh, to be active. Uh, Timekeeper is a nice uh, web UI uh, front end to um, per, uh, Pam's uh, Pam Time module. So just quickly, let's have a look at that. So what this allows us to do is um, uh, set uh, time-based controls on specific users. And uh, time of day access as well. So it might be, for example, after school from 4 o'clock till 7 o'clock only on weekdays. Uh, question? Does that do anything when you're logged in? Yes, it does. Uh, it gives you a five-minute warning mm -hmm. and then automatically logs you out. So it'll log you out of your X session or um, X terms or um, even your command line terminals. It's a it's a PAM module, so um, if you you'll be logging in through PAMs, so it will just uh, kick you out. Even if you're already logged in. Yep. Okay. Yep. So it's uh, monitoring um, uh, the likes of value, uh, but value temp and things like that. Sorry, proc. Um, just parts of proc to be able to um, see if you're logged in. So if you're logged in, it and, use, uh, and then you're configured to only have two hours access, it will work from there on. It won't be retrospective. Okay, timeout D is the third one. So timeout D's caught me a few times. I've got timeout D running on the presentation um, for myself and all other users of the VMs. And um, timeout D, it's, it's not GUI based, but what it does allow you to do is um, uh, specify specific um, sessions, whether it's a TTY or a console or a um, X11 terminal or whatever else, and how long you can be logged on to that uh, for one session and uh, an entire amount of sessions as well. Um, the third one, uh, the next approach is uh, GNOME lockdowns. So I won't uh, have time to look at the um, Puppet-based configurations for um, you know disabling um, uh, Alt F2 for run and those sorts of things, but what we can see is Pestulus. And what Pestulus does?
is allows um, various parts of GNOME to be locked down from a GUI. So from here we can disable um, command line access, um, saving to disk and those sorts of things, typical things where you can sort of escape out and try and um, work around kiosk style controls, as well as the Epiphany web browser. So um, Epiphany is a GNOME based web browser and you can um, make this uh, into a real kiosk sort of mode where um, even entering arbitrary URLs is disabled. Okay, the, first th uh, the last thing I wanted to talk about um, in the presentation is remote view and control. Um, again, best thing about uh, parental controls is, is being with the child in terms of um, uh, monitoring, making sure that um, uh, the, the, so the right sorts of sites and um, things are being looked at. Uh, but if that's not possible, then remote view and control via X11 uh, or XVNC can be used. And um, this is how it's done. So the first step is um, with uh, root privileges on the, um, say, the toddler's machine, you create a um, uh, XVNC password. And uh, from there on in, um, from your machine, you'll create an SSH port forward to the toddler's machine and um, uh, have an XVNC uh, server running from there, of which you can then connect to it uh, via the XVNC viewer. Um, on that last step there, you see the, the view only uh, command line flag, that means that you can watch what's happening, whereas if you remove that you can then have remote control which is great for um, guiding and educational training type um, purposes. So one thing uh, really cool to sort of take that concept further is a um, uh, system called iTalk which we'll load up now and that'll be the last thing for the presentation. So actually I'll cheat and just do it from um, my physical host. Uh, we'll just um, uh, have X11 port forward into the um, Edge Ubuntu server and we run ICA. So iTalk's using um, XVNC, uh, or just VNC under the hood, and uh, SSH uh, key-based authentication so that the, there's no password prompts. And from here, uh, basically iTalk can, will discover all of the uh, machines on that subnet, and uh, you can remotely control um, those machines. So one example, okay, so what we've got here is... Let's wake up this client here. Okay, so we've got a terminal open. Then from iTalk, we can actually remotely see what's on that machine. Then we can do things like um, lock all of the workstations or lock specific ones. Then if you go back to the diskless client, it's actually locked now, so the, the toddler won't be able to use that machine. Um, let's unlock it. We can send te text messages like... Um, like so, and then on the toddler's machine that, that message will appear. Uh, remote shutdown which I'll utilise now as I um, wrap up the demonstration so we can power that down as well. Uh, we can also take remote control and open up applications and um, uh, teach and train if need be. Okay, any questions? Probably only got time for about one question. Sorry, it's just um, one technology product that I, I've, I've kind of come to love and use exclusively for doing my filtering and blocking in my networks for the last couple of years, and that's um, MoBlock, which became Block Control, which is essentially a, a C++ wrapper to IP tables where you can feed in masses of IP address blocks. Yep. And um, I've kind of moved to using that exclusively for a lot of the functions that you're looking at here. Yep. Have, you, have you considered um, adding some sort of uh, control list for that? Yeah, I haven't. I have um, used MoBlock. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it does time-based access controls there. Yeah, but no. 
Sure, yeah. I have used MoBlock uh, in previous iterations, um, but I, what I didn't find was it also a GUI to be able to configure it and make it simpler for uh, more more novice like um, people. But uh, certainly, MoBlock is uh, certainly does some of these things as well. Sure. Yep. Okay, I think we'll have to wrap that up. Uh, thank you very much to Craig. Yep. Thanks, everyone.